the good part is that what has happened on the research space is now getting into the academic space what people used to create in academic institutions now the business is slowly starting to use excel 2016 will pretty much bring it to the public in the sense that it's going to have tree maps and sunburst and so on so visualization thankfully has become a you know from a niche area to a useful hot area to a taken for granted area yeah, even obviously it, it's going to take some time but specifically in terms of the techniques there are a variety of unsolved problems and again the same cycle repeats that research is pushing the bounds and then businesses are adopting it though thankfully now it's more a two way play for example we have a grammar of graphics but we don't have a grammar of interactive graphics we don't yet have a sense of what are the ways in which stories can be told so it's not just enough to take analysis and represent it as visuals we need to get insights out of it so can we automate analysis around it all of these are areas in terms of techniques where there's a lot of research that's going into it so in fact you'll read a number of blog articles for instance talking about how data science has contributed to statistics the problem of for example if i have a large number of uh, data points along a single axis what are the best kinds of buckets that i should put it into is something that has only recently been you know identified or at least improved on this always been a series of theories but it's only now it's gotten to a stage where it's really robust and usable or if one uh, looks at say random forest that came into being primarily to solve net netflix's uh, Uh, then the netflix contest problem so this interaction between academia and the business is now pushing against the bonds along the areas that i just talked about so from a technique perspective we are increasingly seeing more and more of these tools so the good part is the tools that we have right now allow us to reasonably easily do almost anything so you could write a program in javascript that creates almost any kind of visualization and there's a growing number of people that are able to do it where we are lacking on the tool set is what is the right way of doing it effectively what are the frameworks that are emerging so there was i mean if you take just the stanford stack of tools that emerged right I mean, with jeff here uh, effectively starting with prefuse and flare and then going on to d3 with mike bostock and you know, proto was before that and then d3 and now vega and with lyra and so on um, in many ways that is one direction or stack of frameworks that seems to be the most promising approach though there are many others that are emerging and that is largely an unsolved space many of the uh, tools that we are seeing today effectively take these techniques and productize them so a given that the techniques are far from complete or robust the tool ecosystem is in for a churn what you use today will not work tomorrow and therefore it doesn't make sense to invest heavily in a technology that we know will not last for more than 5 years and the churn is even higher worse for companies as such right uh, on the other hand however there is a good ecosystem of tools and therefore my view is that the short answer to what tool should i use today is a whole bunch of them and keep reevaluating that decision once every year on the technique side just keep following research to the extent that one can or wait for a tool that brings it into a usable form yeah. you know i want to also want you to you know talk about your company gramada uh, you have been around for almost 3 years right now now what are the next step what what i what are the interesting things that you are working on what are you innovating there and uh, you know what what does the next step looks like for you so right now what i'm trying to do is get rid of the people problem see ultimately uh, solutions are only as good as the people that they deliver and i'm a believer in machines more than people sadly enough. i mean nothing 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 against people <laughs> but i mean machines can do a lot as well and therefore what i'm trying to do is see how much of what we are doing can be automated see, in one way that's scaling for gram so can we do with 10 people what we could do with 100 in many ways it's also allowing the clients to do what we are doing so if the system is going to be doing what we are doing then why do you need us to do that service element of it just buy the product we'll happily take your money and heck you do it yourself right so that in order to do that there are several layers of infrastructure that need to be built 
and we are in the process of building that infrastructure. Can we automate analysis? Can we automate visualization? Can we automate narration? Can we automate insight discovery? Can we automate data extraction? Can we automate data classification? So those are the themes and obviously we don't have the muzzle to tackle all of these problems. So we've decided to narrow down specifically on the analysis side and on the visualization side and see how much of this we can automate. And for the rest of it, we will rely on people, on partners and the ecosystem and so on. So what this will do is in some, you know, do uh, allow us to do, uh, if you take the entire stack of what it takes to get from data to insights to action, you need to process the data. We were never good at that, that is not our area. Uh, on the analysis and visualization side, we had and continue to have a focus on analysis, but visualization is the area where we cut short the time dramatically to the point where creating a visualization now is fairly a trivial exercise to the point that the team actually finds it boring. Uh, and then there is the converting it to insights and action, which partly involves storytelling, which partly involves restructuring the organization. And the former storytelling is an area that we have a strong interest in and will be diving deep into, but changing organization transformation is a much bigger area. So we can't really solve that problem. So uh, the what we have done is cut short the time here. Now we are trying to reduce that even limited manpower even further. But the rest of the ecosystem, we don't have the bandwidth to focus our effort on. So it's partly around partnering with others, partly around training and partly around taking part in those trainings in the sense, getting other institutes to train people, etc., around this ecosystem so that it progresses collectively. And it's not just one link in the chain that is optimized. We unfortunately can only optimize one or two links in the chain. No, thanks. I mean, that's about it. I mean, you know, the closing comments from you. What do you think about the event? What what has been your experience? Right now? It's uh, been great. Fantastic crowd and number of interesting talks. I'm sure there'll be one every year, if not oftener than that. We'll look forward to seeing those. All right. Thank you.